Sizing up my battery bank was a big challenge for me when I was building my camper van. I wasn't sure how much do I really need. Is 100 amps gonna be enough? Do I need 200? People on YouTube were saying that you will need at least 300 to be self-sufficient. So I decided to build a battery system which can be scaled up if needed in the future. So I chose to start with a 100 amp battery. I was more than happy with just 100 amps during my first summer vacation for about six weeks. I had no problems keeping the battery topped up. The 175 solar panel on the roof was doing its thing when I was parked up and the DC to DC charger was also charging the battery while I was on the move. Now with new additions on the camper van like the diesel heater, auxiliary lights, and an air fryer to make cooking a little bit easier, it was just a matter of time before I had to upgrade to a larger battery pack. And with prices going down over the last few years, now you can actually get a 200 amp hour battery, just like this lead time right here, for the same price that I've paid two years ago for a Renogy 100 amps. So I'm going to test out this battery, but not in the conventional way that people are doing it on YouTube. Uh, there's no point of me really tearing it down because even if I'm going to take a look on the inside, I'm not even sure what to look for. I'm not an expert, but judging by other people's videos, you can definitely see that the capacity is there. We got a full 200 amps in these batteries. And if Will Prowse says that he's looking good on the inside, I'm going to take that and I'm going to trust it. So what I will do is to take it out on a weekend, run all my stuff from this battery and I will let you know how much I use from its capacity. And hopefully you can make a decision if 200 amps is enough for you. By the time we reached the lakes, the DC to DC topped up the battery to 198 amps. You can see on the bottom of the screen, the fridge and the lights were already pulling a few amps, but it's time to go out and set up a campfire. During that night, the diesel heater was running pretty much non-stop as it was cold and windy, and by the next morning, we were down to 178 amps. Now, let me tell you a couple of things about this battery. First of all, the build quality is decent, is not perfect. First of all, if you're going to set it on a flat surface, you will see that it's going to rock, so it doesn't have a perfectly straight bottom. It's got these nice handles on the sides, we've got two regular terminals, and other than that, there's not much to say about it because we don't see much. But it's a hard plastic and it works. Also, lead time are claiming that this battery can provide up to 15,000 cycles, which depends on your actual depth of discharge, uh, right around 4,000 cycles at 100% depth of discharge. But usually, you can probably expect a battery like this to last anywhere between 5 and 10 years, depending, of course, how much are you going to use it and discharge it. You can connect this battery in series and parallel, which is great, and this battery supports up to four identical batteries for up to a 48 volts, 200 amps battery system in series and a 12 volts, 800 amps system in parallel. It's got a built-in BMS to protect it from overcharge, over discharge, over current and short circuits, but no low temperature cutoff protection, which means that if you will charge this battery and if it's going to be under zero degrees, you will probably damage the cells. Also, the maximum discharge current from this battery is 100 amps, which means that you can only use an inverter up to 1200 watts now that's not a problem for me because i only got a 1000 watt inverter which is fine but bear that in mind you won't be able to use a 2000 watt inverter with this battery as for the monitoring the state of charge 
of this battery right now in the uk there is no available battery monitor but you can use a shunt i chose a Renogy monitor shunt for this test but you can go a bit crazy to buy a victron smart shunt so you can have all the information on your uh, smartphone setting up a shunt it's relatively easy all you have to do is connect the shunt between the battery negative and the system negative top up the battery before installing it do the settings uh, on the shunt and you are pretty much ready to go as for cooking as i was saying we are using an air fryer now the problem is that this air fryer is using about 1600 watts and it's going to be too big to use from this battery anyway i only got a one watt inverter that was as i was saying so instead we are using power from the uh, power station that we have under the bed to run this air fryer which we will recharge from the lead time after we are done cooking so basically we are just borrowing po uh, power from the uh, power station Before we set to bed that night, I checked the capacity again and we are down to 63%. During the day, we charged our phones, ran the heater for a few hours and the fridge was running pretty much non-stop. The next morning we were down to 55%, so about 110 amps still available after two nights and almost two full days of cooking, using the fridge, the water pump, lights, charging the phones and all the other stuff. All this time the solar panel was switched off, not that we had too much sun anyway, so we can really see how much current we are really using from this battery. Now obviously the biggest consumer from this van is the diesel heater. When it's blowing steady it will drain about 2 or 3 amps but at startup and shutdown it will go up to 12 or 13 amps for a minute or so. Now depending on how much you are turning it on or off this will be reflected of course on your power consumption. The fridge that I have is pretty economical it's also using about 2 or 3 amps an hour but it was cold outside and that can influence how long the compressor is running for. Obviously on a hot summer's day the fridge will be running more. Now during the winter it's just on start stop as it can quickly reach the desired temperature. Other consumers that I have are the lights but probably both of them combined are pulling a maximum of uh, one amp so not a great deal. Uh, we did charge two phones, a flashlight, top top our power bank and we still had another 110 amps which i consider it's decent enough for our needs what you will see me do here is turning on the charging from the alternator of the van as i have a switch located under the seat also i will be charging the power station on my way back home so it will be ready to use uh, next time that we're gonna go out now I must remind you that all this time we were stationary and that's how much we used in two full days and nights. But if we were to drive to another place or had some sun to charge up the uh, battery from the solar, things would have been a bit different. When we travel we rarely stay in one place more than uh, two days and the alternator combined with the solar is always uh, keeping our batteries topped up so for our needs a 200 amp capacity is more than enough so i've been using this battery now for a couple of months and i haven't experienced any problem with this battery the truth is that only time will tell how well this battery will perform in the future and how for how long it will be able to keep its capacity but for now all i can say is that it has a decent build quality and a great, great price. Right now, I think I've seen it on sale and it was under 500 pounds. So as I've said, two years ago, I've paid 500 pounds for a 100 amp hour Renogy and you can get 200 for the same price. Of course, you have to fit the shunt, but if it's not a big deal for you, as I was saying, you can get a smart um, Victron uh, shunt and you will have all the information on your mobile phone. 
As usual, links are in the description. Check them out just in case you will have a couple of coupons there, like discount coupons, or you can use my affiliate links to purchase one of these. Thanks for watching. I hope it helped and I'll see you next time. Bye.